we have to screen the particular test compound for anti diabetic activity anti ulcer activity anti hypertensive activity but we have to confirm that that particular given compound upon screening produce what kind of exactly what kind of activity that is called as random screening and from that random screening we will come to know what is that is the lead compound that happy finding is called as the serendipity this is the stage one then coming to stage two that is pre clinical study pre clinical study is mainly required to know the safety and the effectiveness of the test compound first of all the effectiveness is somewhat a different thing but the test compound should be set on maximum extent because whatever the drug nowadays we are using some extent it is safe and some adverse effect also the drug is having but the new drug what we are going to screen we have to germany find out how extent the drug is safe and how the drug is effective to find out that particular uh, character we have to go for the pre clinical study first of all in vitro study and then in vivo animal experiment then coming to the next stage that is clinical study after establishment of the safety and effectiveness of the particular compound on uh, that pre clinical phase it is then subjected to clinical trial and that is for testing the compound on human beings <coughs> this pre clinical study there are three phases first is pharmacokinetic <coughs> second is pharmacodynamic and third is toxicity pharmacokinetic all we know adiabatic how the drug is absorbed which route it is going to absorb how extent it is absorbed what is the rate of absorption everything else from that pharmacokinetic parameter we will observe coming to the next step this is the most important step in case of our pharmacological screening method that is pharmacodynamic method pharmacodynamic method it mainly depends upon the drug receptor interaction what uh, just now i told the following so in this pharmacodynamic study we have to know the rate of association of the drug with the receptor how the drug receptor complex is going to be formed and how extent it will be stable and what will be the dissociation and what extent the drug receptor complex will exert the pharmacological response that is the pharmacodynamic then coming to toxicology every drug beyond the certain limit it will give toxic uh, toxicity toxicity may be different types suppose say upon screening we will find out some drugs produces allergy that will come under your dermatitis some drugs produces toxicity in the liver that is liver toxicity some drugs retained in the body for a longer period of time accumulated in the kidney that is nephrotoxicity some drugs causes changes in the sequence of the dna rna etc that is genotoxicity some drugs produces cancer tumor etc etc that is carcinogenicity some drugs in case of pregnant animal or pregnant woman that will produce phocomelia that is teratogenicity but we don't know before screening what sort of toxicity will be produced by the certain kind of drug that is coming to our part for the screening <clears throat> to know the safety and effectiveness it is our first duty to find out what extent the drug is safe and what dose this should be administered what kind of drug drug interaction drug food interaction etc etc it has to be come to our knowledge or come to the knowledge of the researcher next so experimental animal the main purpose the experimental uh, using this experimental animal and the ethical guideline is to using this animal because these are very similar to our humans 
their physical architecture anatomical architecture and physiology is very similar to uh, humans if uh, some kinds of toxicity or some kinds of adverse effect will be observed in animal that's why the dose uh, need to be adjusted or it will be predicted that same kind of reaction that will be occurring in human accordingly the drug will be modified or the drug dose will be adjusted or anything else. so what the ethics says the ethics says each animal has a right to life and humans should not take such a right away of them sabka jeene ka adhikar hai hum isko disturb nahi kar sakte but to carry out the research we have to provide the human care we have to handle the animal with utmost care the animal should not feel pain animal should not get distressed this is the most important thing and that is the part of the research if the physiological data or physiology is going to be altered during stress or during any sort of uh, in human uh, behavior then ultimately that will affect the result of the research we will discuss one by one so for considering this there are three or principle that has been adopted that is reduction refinement and replacement that means <coughs> reduction means we should not use unnecessary number of animal suppose take an example suppose we are we need three groups three groups of different animal suppose say one are for uh, normal group one is test group and another is your control so as per our ethical guideline there is a need of six animals to be taken in each group we should not increase six to ten because there is a unethical and unrational use so the number of as per the guideline the number of animal should be restricted to six and the, the research will be continued first is reduction another way of reduction if for the same activity if the in vitro model is available without performing the in vitro test we should not go for the in if we are finding the positive result in case of in vitro then we will move for in vivo for its for its consumption refinement refinements in experimental technique that means suppose say a surgical procedure is required take an example we are going for uh, anti ulcer activity we have to induce the ulcer one of the most important model in case of your gastric ulcer is the pyloslidation that means ulcer is mainly due to the accumulation of acid pepsin mixture in the stomach that causes the digestion of the mucosal layer and forming the ulcer in that case what is required we have to ligate the pylorus portion thereby whatever the acid and pepsin is going to be secreted from the gastric region that will not form downwards that will be accumulated in the stomach and that accumulation causes ulcer that is one of the best and important model for the gastric ulcer so for that we need animal in incision light incision will be there we have to lift that particular pylorus portion we have to ligate it then we have to again stitch it we have to place the animal in the cage for four to six hours for the getting the ulcer so this is the process so refinement says if for performing this particular uh, surgery the animal should be anesthetized first that means short term anesthesia are there suppose say your whatever we are using halothen and all ketamine is there phenobarbital pentobarbital is there so what kind of it will give short term anesthesia then during the process of surgery the animal will get sense again 
so that will cause pain so the patient says you have to choose the appropriate method with the appropriate chemical that's why the animal should not feel any sort of pain or any sort of distress that is the refinement replacement that is the method if any other easy method is there you have to replace the other methods so this is uh, the ethical guideline every uh, animal activity that is regulated as per the guideline of cpcsk committee for the purpose of uh, purpose for the control and supervision of experiments on animals this particular committee has been formed by the pca act prevention of cruelty to animal act 1960 this particular committee has been framed under the ministry of environment and forest government of india and this particular cpcsca has been framed some guidelines and that guideline already converted to your iic institutional animal committee and the institutional biosafety committee there are two different committees those are mainly responsible to look after all the matters related to the ethics for the use of animals this is the uh, entire constitution of cpcsa ministry of environment and forest cpcsa then iic and isp institutional biosafety committee this is the good laboratory practice these things already we have discussed next first of all we should get the veterinary care for the animals we should have sound knowledge what kind of care we should provide during housing as well as during experimentation this is the most important thing veterinary care means animals should be kept properly with sanitization sanitized cage polypropylene cages with proper host bedding <coughs> this is the first important thing with minimum sound minimum noise and adjustment with light and dark cycle what is the requirement of light and dark cycle because light and dark cycle maintenance means from 7 am to 7 pm there will be a light cycle and the light should be off during 7 pm to 7 am that required for the adequate maintenance of the hormones as all of you know that the hormone required for the uh, sleeping is melatonin melatonin is produced in response of dark not in presence of light if the light cycle will be maintained for a longer period of time that will affect the secretion of melatonin which is required for the sleeping pattern if the animal will be asleep then again it will help for the result so these are the all these things then zoonosis zoonosis is the main part that means spreading of infection by animals so जो भी एनिमल रूम में काम कर रहे हैं जो भी एनिमल केयर कर रहे हैं उनको प्रिवेंटिव मेजर लेके उसके अंदर जाना चाहिए और वो आके बाहर में स्प्रेड नहीं होना प्रोक्योरमेंट दिस इज द मोस्ट इंपोर्टेंट पार्ट इन द रिसर्च प्रोक्योरमेंट मींस एनिमल्स शुड बी प्रोक्योर लॉफुली एज पर सीपीसीसी गाइडलाइन क्यों? Because in case of research, we need inbred animals. Inbred animal means animal should be bred properly. If the outbred or the mixed bred animal will be there, there will be chance of genetic difference. अगर बाहर का कोई animal मैंने यहाँ से ले आया, दूसरा area से ले आया और एक जगह में रख दिया और जो pups generate होंगे, उसका genetic में variation आएगा और genetic variation के कारण result को भी affect करेगा. तो इंट्रेड एनिमल को हमको लॉफुली प्रोक्योर करना चाहिए और ट्रांसपोर्टेशन भी प्रॉपर होना चाहिए देन 
Next step is quarantine. Whatever the newly received animals, they will be kept in a separate place to determine free of disease. If the disease will be there, then it will affect our in-house animals. So quarantine and stabilization is must and it is also required to maintain the physiological condition stable. That means, अगर एक एनिमल को मैं यहाँ से लेके जा रहा हूँ, during transportation animal will be very stressed and there will be hormonal changes. अगर एनिमल को लेके मैं तुरंत अगर एक्सपेरिमेंट के लिए ले जाऊँ, वो भी रिजल्ट को आपको मिलेगा। Next, next केजिंग बता दिया आपने उनको दिस इज द एनिमल केजेस यू सी दिस पर्टिकुलर केजेस शुड बी नंबर प्रॉपर्ली टू अवॉइड मिक्सिंग ऑफ एनिमल्स अगर हम एनिमल को यूज कर रहे हैं जैसे एनिमल केज है this is the stainless steel lead this particular lead provided to protect the animal from the outside environment and this is the polypropylene case and inside that case there is a husk bedding bedding is required this is the bedding this is for the absorption of the fecal matter like urine and fecal matter if the bedding will not be there then automatically the animal will be affected with the urine and other fecal matter and animal will not get proper uh, environment to stay in the animal house. So this is the most important thing. You see same thing is there and this is the water water we are providing here and here this particular inside this uh, tube there is a rotating ball, stainless steel ball. You see if we move the, like this, if the animal will touch the mouth here, the water droplet will come, the animal will get the water. If there will be no touching of mouth, no water will come. So this is the most important thing for housing the animal inside the cage. Experimental area, temperature and humidity. Temperature should be between 18 to Maximum 29. The optimum temperature required is 22 to 23 degree centigrade. Where the animal will kept very nicely. Housing system. That means escape room. जो animal का जो house है वहाँ पे हम जाली लगा रखे हैं. यहाँ भी एक stainless steel का आपका lid भी दिया है. और clean and sanitation ये भी कुछ कुछ दिन में इसको हम सैनिटाइज करते हैं केस को और बेडिंग को भी सैनिटाइज करते हैं और स्टेराइल वाटर प्रोवाइड करते हैं जैसे कि कंटामिनेंट वाटर ना हो एनिमल को कोई किसी टाइप का इन्फेक्शन ना हो ये सारे चीज एकदम ध्यान दिया जाता है फूड जनरली अपर इज हियर एंड दिस इज कॉल्ड एज योर पेलेटेड डाइट मीटिंग ऑल न्यूट्रिशनल वैल्यूज लाइक दिस दिस इज द पेलेट डाइट all sort of nutritional requirement by the animals is mixed here and that will be put into the hopper and the animal will eat accordingly. This is very next. Water already I told. Sanitation and cleanliness. Next. Emergency and weekend. Weekend service may generally मंडे टू सैटरडे लेकिन एक प्रॉपर केयर टेकर को हम अपॉइंटमेंट करते हैं जो कि आगे हॉलीडे में एनिमल का केयर लेना चाहिए एनिमल को किसी हालत में केयर से कमी नहीं होना चाहिए लैबोरेटरी एनिमल में जनरली 
laboratory animals are divided into two types one is large animal and another is small animal large animal mein aap logon ka monkey horse and rabbits and other animals rabbit also coming under your small animal and mainly whatever the animal we are dealing for this particular kind of research that include four types rats wooster albino rats mainly mice guinea pig and rabbits four kind of animals generally we are using in our labs see this is the difference between the two animals that is healthy mouse this is the black one and this is the white one how we will differentiate these two animals this is the sick mouse how the sitting pattern of this animal you see this is the sitting pattern that indicates the mouse is suffering some sort of stress or any sort of disease but in case of uh, this previous one how the posture was this particular sitting pattern and the behavior of that particular animal will indicate either the animal by visual observation itself we will come to know either the animal is in healthy condition or animal is suffering from any sort of stress or any sort of pain or any sort of suffering from disease that expertise will come to you people by continuous observation and continuous working in the lab So this is the sign of pain and the distress the animal showing, animal behavior showing. First, the decreased activity. Animal is sitting in one place, no movement, no activeness. Horses are erect to some extent. Posture is hunched up. And the breathing is rapid and slow. If you will observe this person. abdominal portion you see the breathing is swallow rare tears squinting of eyes animal will produce sound vocalization feed or water is removal it will provide the feed the animal will not willing to take the feed weight loss these are the signs and symptoms from that we can observe the pain and the distress in animal because animal will not capable to say you what sort of pain what sort of suffering sir is going to feel this is the restraining method handling method how we have to handle the animal you see this is the handling method here the researcher is using two hands that means First hand to hold the neck portion and another hand is to hold the tail. One more method is there. This is the single-handed method, one-handed holding method. You see, the tail is kept between the two finger and the neck portion is held by these two finger. So it is the method we will show you. Later we will show you. This is a two-handed method. This is the intraperitoneal injection in mouse. This is the common method for administering the drug. These are the requirements. This is a 26 gauge needle and some cotton, 75 percent alcohol, cotton ball, or surface disinfectant, and 25 to 26 gauge needle is required. Or intraperitoneal injection. This is the holding method for injection to the mouse. See, this is the area, abdominal area, where the injection to be injected. See, this is the injection procedure. This is the intraperitoneal method. In single-handed method, we have to. Hold the animal carefully without giving any sort of stress or pain. And in another hand, we have to take our drug 
loaded with 26 gauge needle and the one ml syringe and we have to inject here. This is the subcutaneous injection. Subcutaneous injection we will show you. Everything we will show you here by holding the animal. This is the area. This is the subcutaneous. This is the intramuscular injection. See, these are the area where the intramuscular injection is generally given. Next. <laughs> These are some different uh, uh, species we have shown here. See, this is the alopecia. These are some diseases of animals. See the hair loss. Falls are going to be lose by some sort of chemicals administered and or other any sort of disease that is metabolic dysfunction. This is the malocclusion, growth of teeth and the other. This parts of the this is the cutting training procedure of malocclusion. This is the it is very important part. Difference between the male and female gender in animals. Very very different, very uh, difficult. In some cases, many researchers, many students. They don't know which one is male gender and which one is female gender. The identification is also very essential before performing the screening and other uh, research process. See, these are the distance between the anal canal and the urinogenital organ. From this difference, easily you can understand in case of male, the distance is more. Anal canal and urinogenital distance, and here in case of female, that is the difference is less. Very easy process, easily you can understand and easily, easily you can identify the gender of one. This is the most important. These are the same thing. This is the proper method of handling and without giving any sort of stress to the animal. This is again interperitoneal injection. This is the oral gadgets. We have to hold the animal. This is the oral feeding needle. Slightly bent and on the top of that needle that uh, bulb is there to protect the esophageal junction. So this is the process of the next. Then blood collection technique. Blood generally we require for the hematological estimation after administering of the different kinds of drugs and the test substance. So there are many methods are there, but some easy and convenient method is retroorbital plexus by using inserting the capillary into the retroorbital plexus. But uh, some researchers they are also claiming that the tail vein is also uh, convenient but uh, according to my knowledge and uh, according to my practice tail vein uh, collection from tail vein is very difficult and you cannot uh, collect the adequate quantity of the blood from the tail vein itself. Tail vein, orbital sinus and cardiac puncture these are the three main important methods where we can collect the blood. Right? Blood collection volume 0.1 ml approximately. These are the requirements. This is again holding technique. This is the rat restrainer. This is the tail vein process through which the blood can be withdrawn. This is the tail cutting method directly is cutting the portion of the tail because in some times the tail vein is not visible properly and then sometimes it is very difficult to insert or prick that needle into the vein, lumen of the vein and collecting the blood. This is the another method, tail cutting. This is the orbital sinus. Next. 
these are the requirements see into that corner of the eye we have to insert that capillary tube by rotating and again when it will be filled into the orbital sinus ultimately due to the pressure the blood will be withdrawn this is the method see next this is some that collecting tube is there and again through the help of that particular tube the blood is collected cardiac puncture one or of up to one of the blood directly injecting that needle into the cardiac chamber so this is the process through which the blood is collected by this is the anesthetic pipe continuous anesthesia the researcher is giving here next this is the wooden process this is the saphenous vein another method is there so this one see this one is of lateral saphenous vein back side leg right side vein pehle we have to clean the pus by applying the depilatory cream the pus will be removed or washed and then this particular vein will be Clearly, it will be seen, and we have to insert the needle, and we have to collect the blood. This is the saphenous vein. Next, this is the distant method, Kelvin method. Next, This is the stickering. How we have to marking the case, date, time, signature, and the problem with any. Thank you. So we will see here uh, the welding method and other things practically. How we have uh, observed from the slide. One by one, we will try to. Carry out on this particular using animal, live animal. Are you also? See, this is a transparent case. This transparent case, uh, we have prepared some cotton ball. These are cotton balls, and uh, these cotton balls are soaked with the halothen anesthesia. Now what we have to do? We have to close it. How to anesthetize the animal? So we have to animal को यहाँ से उठाना है, एकदम top से animal को अगर पकड़ेंगे, तो animal का क्या है? Tail का जो ऊपर कोट होता है, जो skin है वो निकल जाता है। तो इसीलिए अनिमोल को अगर हम यहाँ अगर क्लोज कर देते हैं और ऑब्जर्व करते हैं तब तो तक अनिमोल को हम क्या है फोर्सफुली इनहेल करने के लिए हम यहाँ डालें बिकॉज देर इज नो एस्केप अनिमोल विल फोर्सफुली इनहेल द हेलोथेन तो ऑटोमेटिकली द अनिमोल विल बी अनस्थेटाइज You see, the animal already anesthetized. And we have to hold like this. See, this is the method to hold the animal. And this portion will be like this. What we have observed in the slide? So slide sir, holding in one method. See, this is the method. Tail within these two finger and the back portion like this, and we have to hold the animal by one hand. If we will go for the oral cavity, this is the oral feeding needle. Whatever the description we have discussed, that is the tip of the this thing is very smooth surface, and we have to 
this thing like this. You see how extent it is going. Very smoothly it is going to esophageal region. If you will enter into trachea, the animal will non cooperate. If we will go for the intraperitoneal, this is the intraperitoneal region. This is the one animal syringe. Drug will be loaded here and it will be printed into this portion and it will be injected. This is the oral, this is the holding, this is the oral feeding and this one is intraperitoneal. Is it clear to all of you? Yes, sir. 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 तो एनिमल को 
ब्लड ड्रॉ करने के बाद हम इसको ऐसे ही थोड़ा प्रेस करके रखना पड़ता है प्लॉट प्लॉटिंग के लिए तो उसके बाद एनिमल तुरंत तो अपना पोजीशन को आ जाता है और कोई हार्म नहीं होता हम अभी भी देख लेंगे सामने इसमें क्या है थोड़ा बहुत प्रैक्टिस चाहिए माने स्किल डेवलप के लिए डेफिनेटली हम अलाउ नहीं करते हैं नेक्स्ट टाइम किसी पे यही प्रोसीजर है कि तो ड्यूरेशन है तीन महीने छह महीने में ऐसे कम से कम चार पांच दिन चार पांच दिन ऑफ टाइम होता है और उसमें ध्यान देना रहता है ये आप देखिए आने वाला था आंख में कोई दिक्कत नहीं है ना थोड़ा देर में ये आने वाला भी चलने लगेगा ये रेटर ऑफ डाल पैक्सेस ये थोड़ा समय लगता है थोड़ा रिकवरी के लिए ये कभी कभी क्या होता है अगर इसमें ऑब्जर्व करते हैं थोड़ा लेट होता है ना आंख में थोड़ा दर्द हो जाता है अनास्थेशिया थोड़ा ज्यादा हो जाता है माने इवन इन 5 सेकंड आल्सो द एनिमल विल डाई सी एनिमल का आंख का होती है सारी चीज क्लियर नॉर्मल इट वाज गुड हां सो ये ठीक है और इससे कुछ आपको डाउट वगैरह है वो जो ट्यूब जिसमें हम ब्लड कलेक्ट करते हैं जो हाँ नहीं नहीं डिपेंडेंट ट्यूब के अलावा वो एडिटी ट्रीटेड ट्यूब और बहुत सारे एंटी कोआगुलेंट रहता है हाँ तो क्या उसका हमारी ड्रग के साथ कोई इंटरफेरेंस होगा क्या वो डिपेंड करता है ड्रग का कैरेक्टर के ऊपर तो मतलब ऐसा कहीं है स्टैंडर्ड कि यही यूज करना है नहीं आपको अगर एडिटी अगर एंटी कोआगुलेंट नहीं डालना है जैसे कि कुछ एडिटी कुछ जगह में हम सोडियम एडिटी डालते हैं कुछ जगह में हेपारिन डालते हैं वो डिपेंड करता है कैरेक्टर के कौन सा ड्रग अगर वो हेपारिन के साथ इंटरेक्ट करता है तो हम एडिटी डालते हैं एडिटी के साथ करता है कुछ ड्रग के साथ हमारा बिल्कुल ये नहीं रहना चाहिए विदाउट एंटी कोआगुलेंट भी बाकी इसका और कुछ सर सर ये फीमेल देखना है दिखा दो भाई इसका जी जी सर मेल आने वाला फीमेल आने वाला दोनों ये डिजिटल है सर दोनों इसमें क्या सर एक क्वेश्चन था सर कि जैसे ब्लड कलेक्ट करके बन लैब्स भेजते हैं तो उसमें कुछ कैटेगराइज रहते हैं जो जो ह्यूमन बींग्स पे जो टेस्ट लगाते हैं और इसमें जो टेस्ट लगाएंगे तो वो लगभग सिमिलर को प्रोटोकॉल्स होते हैं कि सिमिलर सिमिलर होते हैं सिमिलर प्रोटोकॉल रहता है वो डिपेंड कर रहा है सपोज हम कौन सा पैरामीटर करते हैं वो पैरामीटर का क्या माने रिक्वायरमेंट और बाकी जैसे कि हम ब्लड विड्रन करते हैं उसको हम भेजते हैं उसके लिए ब्लड जैसे डिग्रेड ना हो उसका क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन मतलब जो टेम्परेचर में हमको ब्लड का स्टेबिलिटी में कोई हम पर ना हो उस कंडीशन में सर हमको भेजना है और बाकी बॉडी बॉडी का जो अगर ऑर्गन हो गया या टिश्यूज हो गया तो इसको भी हम क्रायो प्रिजर्वेशन लिक्विड नाइट्रोजन चैम्बर में उसको रखते हैं सर सर आपने कोई डायबिटिक रेडनोपैथी कोई मॉडल पे काम किया है रेडनोपैथी कोई फोन पर आपको काम तो फिर भी बेटर मॉडल क्या हो सकता है सजेशन उसके लिए आपको मॉडल देखना पड़ेगा क्या मॉडल आप मेरे बोले उसके ऊपर मेरा ज़्यादा काम है अगर कुछ लगेगा तो मैं बता दूँगा आपको नहीं उसके लिए आपको लॉन्ग टर्म क्योंकि आपको तीन चार मॉडल है जैसे कि इनसीजन एक्सीजन और आपका बॉल मूव हो गया तो ये सारे मॉडल के लिए अगर आपको इनसीजन करना है जनरली आपको अगर मूव ऑन करना रहेगा तो ये नेक फोर्सन हम जनरली सिलेक्ट करते हैं जैसे कि हम फॉर को रिमूव करना रहेगा डेपिलेटरी क्रीम हम लगा दिए डेपिलेटरी क्रीम के बाद आपको ऊन इंसीजन करना है काटते हैं स्किन को ऊन फर्म करने के लिए तो उसमें क्या होता है जब एनिमल को कभी पेन होता है वो मुंह घुमा के अगर दूसरा जगह में अगर हम ऊन क्रिएट कराएंगे वो एनिमल को चाट देता है
जिप में उसको ये कर देता है पेन होता है नहीं तो दांत में उसको ये कर देता है कोई ड्रॉप लगा दिया उसको जैसे कि बिटाडिन हो गया कॉपिडोन आयोडिन हो गया या सुपरऑक्सीडेंट हो गया उसको लगा देते तो एनिमल उसको खा लेता है तो इसीलिए बेटर रहे है कि आप नेक पोर्शन में करेंगे ऊपर में तो उसमें एनिमल मुंह घुमा के मुंह नहीं लगा पाता है ये एक इम्पोर्टेंट चीज है और इसमें जो है लॉन्ग टर्म हमको ये करना है इन तो ये जनरली हम शॉर्ट टर्म जैसे हाइड्रोथेन या दूसरा यूज करते हैं उसमें नहीं किया जाता है उसके लिए जनरली केटामिन है तो फेनोबार्बिटोन पेंटोबार्बिटोन यूज करते हैं लोकल का जरूरत नहीं पड़ता है लोकल में हम जायरोगिन वगैरह दे सकते हैं लेकिन लोकल का उतना जरूरत नहीं पड़ता है सर एक और क्वेश्चन है कि एक एनिमल में हम कितनी एक्टिविटीज कर सकते हैं ऐसा कुछ प्रोटोकॉल या कुछ ऐसा सर वो डिपेंड करता है कि आप किस टाइप का एक्टिविटी कर रहे हैं जैसे कि अगर कोई हजारस केमिकल अगर हम दे रहे हैं वो एनिमल को हम आगे जाके कोई एक्सपेरिमेंट में नहीं कर सकते सीधा डिस्कार्ड कर रेडियो एक्टिव सब्सटेंस दे रहे हैं या हजारस सब्सटेंस दे रहे हैं उसको नहीं करते जैसे कि हम जैसे डायबिटिक हेपेटो प्रोटेक्टिव इस टाइप की एक्टिविटीज कर रहे हैं डायबिटिक में भी सर नहीं करते नहीं करते जनरली क्या है आपका बीटा सेल डीजेनरेट हो जाता है और इंसुलिन लेवल भी हम पर हो जाते हैं अगर कोई रिसर्च प्रॉपर वे में करना चाहेंगे तो हम एनिमल को फ्रेश एनिमल लेना चाहिए ना कि कोई रिटर्ड एनिमल ना कोई यूज और सर अगर इसको हम ये करने के बाद अगर हम कोई आइसोलेटेड ऑर्गन जैसे कि यूजी और पीजी लेवल में आइसोलेटेड ऑर्गन जैसे कि इफेक्ट ऑफ ड्रग ऑन रेड इंडियम रेड जेजुन उसको हम काट करके ऑर्गन बाथ में लगा के उसके ऊपर हम काम कर सकते हैं उसके ऊपर ज्यादातर इफेक्ट नहीं पड़ता लेकिन हेमाटोलॉजिकल पैरामीटर बायोकेमिकल पैरामीटर के लिए हमको जनरली फ्रेश आइस थैंक यू एक है विनिंग स्टेज एक है पोस्ट विनिंग स्टेज विनिंग स्टेज इज डिफाइंड एज द स्टेज ऑन विच द पॉप्स रेड पॉप्स डिपेंड्स अपॉन द मदर मेड Not getting the outside food, or else any sort of pelleted diet, whatever we are providing on the other. That is weaning stage. During weaning stage, we are not recommending the animal for experimental purposes. Okay. So if the animal will leaving the weaning stage, enter into the post weaning stage, and getting the outside food, that will call as your adult stage or experimental stage, on which the animal can be used for the experiment. There is no need to hold the animal. Thank you so much, sir. Very nice. Uh, purpose is there, but the, for the purpose of education, for the purpose of research, for the purpose of breeding and trading, this institute is approved for for breeding and trading also. We got the license. So breeding facility is also available here, and all the inbred strains are available here. If for the purpose of further research, if anybody wants to procure the animal from this organization, you can also procure by proper way. Particular amount need to be paid, but you will get the inbred animal for the purpose of research. Thank you, sir, for sharing your deep knowledge with us. Thank you. It will be a great pleasure for us to listen to you again in our future event. Now I request. Dr. Shiv Shankar Shukla sir to present a memento and certificate of appreciation to our guest speaker as a token of gratitude.